Hello, hello, hello. Uh, it is Friday and that means I am live on Facebook again and I am talking to you today about fabric options. So when you're making dog coats, you have all sorts of different options for what you can make the dog coat out of. You might want to make a uh, waterproof or a water resistant coat, or you might want to make something out of a tweed or a wool or fleece. So I'm just going to go over some different options and things to look out for when you're buying your fabric. So um, let me just show you a first a few examples of some coats. So this is a coat that I made out of um, faux leather or sometimes called leatherette or uh, sometimes it's called vegan leather. You could also make this coat out of regular leather, real leather, but actually the, the faux leather is more waterproof. The faux leather is a, it's, it's made by taking um, a polyester or a rayon or sometimes even a cotton and they, they coat it with polyurethane laminate and they put that on the outside. Hey Gabby, thanks for joining me. This is great. So they put a, a poly laminate, lam, polyurethane laminate, it's sometimes called PUL, um, and they'll put that on the back, or sorry, on the coat. They'll coat the entire fabric with the polyurethane laminate. <laughs> that's a tough one to get out, but it's PUL. It's often just called PUL. So that's what you look for when you're looking for a fabric. So that is a great option. Faux leather is awesome. If you get a really nice quality one, there's different kinds of qualities. This one's a little bit shiny, like a shiny leather. I also have some other stuff that I don't have on hand to show you, but it's a little bit of a flatter um, faux leather and it has that more soft look to it. So you can get these in all sorts of different types. So take a look around at the faux leather, but that's an awesome option for types of um, fabrics to work with. The other one that I wanted to show you here is this is made out of faux suede. And unlike regular suede, um, faux suede will actually uh, be fairly water resistant. Now this is called water repellent. It's not waterproof by any stretch. The, um, the vegan leather one or the, the leatherette, faux leather, that's actually pretty much waterproof. But this is water resistant or water repellent. And um, uh, so it's, it's actually far more water repellent than a, a suede would be, a natural suede. So that's a really nice option for you to work with is, is a faux suede. So that's something that people don't necessarily think about when they're thinking about making a dog coat, but that's an awesome option. Um, so I'm just gonna, gonna, I've got a few different scraps here, like just patches, I should say, not scraps, but um, patches of fabric that I wanna show you. Um, so one of the most waterproof options that you can find out there is rubber. This is a rubber fabric. It's, uh, it's got a bit of, um, uh, a backing on it, but it is water. It's hundred percent waterproof. This is rubber. Now it's great if you're trying to get a coat that's absolutely waterproof, hundred percent waterproof. The water is not going to get through the coat on your dog, but it is warm. This is warmer. It doesn't breathe at all. So uh, that's something to think about, um, especially if you're exercising or your dog is exercising while they're wearing their coat. You don't want to have it overheating the dog. So it's a great option if you're going for a nice walk outside when it's pouring down rain and you just want to keep your dog dry, but you're not overworking them. Um, and Gabby's asking whether or not it's important that it's breathable. Yes and no. I mean, it really depends on how much coverage you've got on your dog. It also depends on if you're lining the coat. If you line the coat with a fleece, that's going to add to the warmth um, that's just on the dog itself and the dog is feeling while it's wearing the coat. So um, it's not necessarily important to be breathable like it is for us, where we want it to be breathable, um, you know, under the arms and things like that. It isn't because that it's a dog coat, um, let me just grab this example here. This dog coat here is actually quite open underneath. It has a strap that goes underneath the belly, but it is quite open. Most of the dog, its whole uh, sides and undercarriage, a lot of the dog is um, open to the uh, air so it can breathe and it, and it doesn't have to worry about being 100% covered. The other option here for another style of dog coat is this style of dog coat, which is, um, I call this the cozy dog coat. 
and it has even more of the body exposed. It has a, a wrap around the belly and it has a wrap around the neck. But it is, it, it's, it's fairly important for a dog coat to be breathable. And so there are some other options you can think about. As I said, for the rubber, great option if you really just need to keep your dog 100% dry. And I tell you, there are customers that I have, I have customers that wanna just keep their dog dry. That's all they care about. But most of the fabrics that you can buy out there, these PUL fabrics, they are still super water resistant. They're, you don't need to go to the leather, I mean, to sorry, to the rubber to get a water resistant coat that's going to stand up. Um, I should have brought in Scout's coat because uh, I made this coat for her. You'll often see it in photographs and videos and stuff that I put up on it and on social media. Scout in her yellow coat. I made it for her uh, probably about four and a half years ago. Um, and it, it still is waterproof. It's amazing. It, um, it, it still holds up underneath, under the weather. So it, it really is great stuff. And I actually made it out of this fabric. So it doesn't matter what the color is. But if you look at it, you can see there's a little bit of a sheen on it. Um, if I move it in the camera there, you can sort of see there's a bit of a sheen. So it's got a little bit of a coating on the outside. And then on the back, it has this PUL coating. So that's the polyurethane laminate that they put on the back of the fabric. And that's really great. It stands up really well. So when you're feeling these fabrics, it's really important to kind of feel them out uh, and see whether that fabric is, or that laminate is going to stay with it. So I want to show you an example of one that isn't all that great. Now I'm going to scratch this. Let's show if it shows you. When I'm sewing with this, can you see those? Yeah, here you can see it already. Just scratching this, it's starting to peel off. So, you know, if you're in a fabric store and you're testing out some different fabrics, just try it a little corner and just give it a little scratch and just see. If I scratch on this one, it doesn't come off. You can, I, I know you can't tell from the camera, but I can feel the difference between these two. So it's really important to just kind of test it out a little bit if you can without getting in trouble, um, just to see whether or not it feels like it's going to hold up. Um, some other options. So these are the ones that have the polyurethane white stuff on the back. And then there's another one that's um, it's clear on the back. So it's it's red on the front and it's red on the back. And this, I, I sort of think of this as a bit more, I call it rubbery. It's still the polyurethane laminate, but it's it's more of a rubber feeling to it than the other white kind of feels like more like pasty kind of thing. So this is, there's a lot of, you can get a lot of different fabric options like this. So this one has that same kind of sheen. This is the outside of the fabric and it has that same kind of sheen to it. And it, so it, it when the water hits this, it beads up. It doesn't soak right in usually, depending on the kinds of fabrics. But if it has that sheen on the outside, it tends to not soak in. Here's another fabric that has that same kind of rubbery backing to it. So that's the backing I'm showing you. But the front is actually, it doesn't have that sheen. So again, it's a bit hard to see, but this one's almost like a cotton. It feels like a cotton when you touch the outside. And it, and it, it um, if I compare it to this yellow one here that's the, got the white backing, it's a little bit more supple. It feels more like a cotton. Now, the problem with it, it's not a problem, but it's more an aesthetic. Um, when you're using this, it, it tends to sink in. It, the water looks like it's saturating the fabric. So you feel like your dog's getting wet, but they're not uh, because it's got this backing. So it's not soaking through it just, it just tends to saturate the outside layer of it so it looks like it's getting wet, but it's not. So it's another really great option. And you can get those in all sorts of different colors. This is another one, a nice lovely maroon kind of color. It's got a really good shiny background. This is a great one. Um, it doesn't break down at all when I'm, when I'm sewing on it. And that's when you'll tend to do the most damage to it, depending on what kind of lining you have on your dog coat. It tends to be that the most damage you can do to your materials are when you're sewing it because the, the the presser foot is kind of and the, those little dog feeds at the bottom of your machine are kind of grabbing into it and can do some damage this is another option so wait i'm just going to check into the questions here so gabby says good to know is it is going for gore-tex a bit extra exaggerated well actually as you asked for the gore-tex um so to answer your question 
um, here I'll just pop it up on the screen so people can see it, um, is going for Gore-Tex a bit extravagant. Not necessarily. I mean, Gore-Tex is more expensive and Gore-Tex is a brand name. So you can get stuff that looks like Gore-Tex that actually acts pretty much like Gore-Tex, but you're not buying Gore-Tex, the actual brand name. So that's an option. Um, and there's lots of different fabrics that are similar to a Gore-Tex. Um, and so these ones that I'm just about to show you sort of feel to me like a bit like a Gore-Tex. Now, Gore-Tex does come in some different op, um, varieties as well. But these ones here feel to me like like a Gore-Tex, but they're not Gore-Tex. So it's this one, It's it, they're a little bit more like a canvas. They're thick. Um, if I If I hold these two up, you can see how this maroon one is just kind of flopsy. And especially if I hold up this blue one I was telling you about that feels kind of like canvas. I mean, I can't even hold it up straight. Whereas you can see this one, it's 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 really straight because it's thicker and it's got this kind of Gore-Tex um, feel to it. So it has the front of it. Let's see if we can get this into some kind of a view. I don't know that I can get that, but Hopefully you can see it's kind of got this canvas look to it. It's got um, like that cross hatch kind of pattern that canvas tends to have. And then on the back, it's got the poly, uh, polyure, the P-U-L. We'll just go with P-U-L. So much easier to say. So this is um, this is like what you're talking about, Gabby, the Gore-Tex. And uh, again, it's not Gore-Tex. It's not the brand name Gore-Tex, but it's similar to Gore-Tex. So you can go with this stuff. The only thing is it's, as I said, it's thicker. So the coat feels thicker. It doesn't have that, it doesn't drape as nicely around the dog, uh, but it's an excellent opportunity. I mean, a great option for uh, making coats. So that's a great one. And I have, it, I have this in a few different colors. I've got it in purple. So again, you can see, now this one's a little bit more flopsy than the other one, but it is, um, it's probably just more due to the size of the, the, the swatch that I cut out because it is, this one's very thick as well. It's got the same, this is the front I'm trying to show you. It's got the same kind of um, Gore-Tex kind of fabric on the outside and it's got a, um, a PUL fabric um, backing to it, a laminate backing to it. And this comes into some awesome different shades. Um, this is another option that I picked up from my favorite, um, uh, b -b 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 sorry, my favorite fab fabric store here in town is called Our Social Fabric. I just love them because what they do is they take fabrics out of the landfill. So they take donations from industries in Vancouver and, and the lower mainland and here in BC. And they take fabrics in and they save them from the landfill. So what they do is they get these by donations and then they package them up and they sell them um, at really good, incredible discounted prices. So I get a lot of my fabrics from them because I love the idea of this kind of recycling of fabrics. They're all brand new fabrics. They've never been used, but they were traditionally just thrown in the landfill. So this is a really great option. And I love these guys for this. So this is one of the fabrics that I bought from them. Just love them. Um, a couple of other options that um, I love on my fat um, when I'm making sewing, when I'm sewing dog coats are, I'll just take this one off. Um, so this, and I have a hard time finding this. If anybody's watching this and they know how to find this fabric, I would love to hear about it. Um, this is what I call silver backed fabric. So this is a very, this is super, super light. It's what they make umbrellas out of. So it's a great coat for a really, really super light slicker. Um, and Gabby, who's on the call right now, she came up with this great idea for a fold away, um, a pocket, what I call the pocket pooch. And it's a coat that I designed on the cozy pattern. And it all folds up into a little tiny pocket, like, like our old pocket ponchos that we used to have. So um, this fabric is awesome for that because it's, it's, it's sturdy. It doesn't rip, but it, can you hear that? It's almost like paper. It's it's a funny fabric, but it's awesome for something like a really light fold away um, jacket, like the pocket pooch. This is my absolute favorite favorite fabric. Um, it's it comes in all sorts of different shades, and the backing is actually this is a reflective backing. As is this this is reflective as well. So if it gets caught in the light at nighttime, it will um, it'll shine up. It will. Uh, you know, it'll be reflective. So this has, this is a reflective backing, but it's super soft and supple. 
it doesn't scrape off doesn't matter and it, and you can um you can kind of hear that it's got a ridge to it. it it's almost like you know it's got these ridges to it it is such a beautiful fabric to work with it's so it just glides along your sewing machine um these kind of fabrics with this pul backing they get what i call sticky that they don't slide across the sewing machine bed very easily. So you have to do some tricks. Now, one of the tricks that I saved, shared last week, or no, I guess it was this week, actually. One of the tricks that I shared that I just kind of discovered while I was chatting with my sister about how much difficulty difficulties I have making with these with these kind of fabrics and with that um, this this uh, faux leather is it sticks now the the presser foot sticks to it and you can work with a teflon presser foot but it still is kind of sticky so i came up with this as i was talking with my sister i just grabbed the measuring tape and i tried it and it just it just glided along it was so it was such a great moment so it's a great tip if you're looking if you're working with something that's really sticky and it isn't sliding across your sewing machine bed try the measuring tape I do have a video on how that uh, how easy that is to work with, and I'll put that up. Um, well, you should see that on social media. So again, this stuff is just a dream to work with. It just glides along. Uh, the other one I wanted to show you is an interesting fabric. This is literally like a cotton. It's it's or a polyester, whatever. It is polyester, but it's it's got that just very supple, supple. Um, it's so soft, it, it hangs, it drapes. It's a beautiful um, fabric. If you were thinking of doing something like um, a, a, a dress for a dog or something that you want to have sort of, or a shirt for a dog, that, something that you want to have that's a little bit more loose um, feel to it. And, but what they've done with this, this is still a water resistant fabric. What they've done with this is they've treated it with, um, some product and i'm really not sure what it is i should research that actually but they have treated this with some product that makes it water resistant so when you pour water on this amazingly it does not soak through so it's kind of an interesting option depending on what kind of style of coat you're making um the other things i'm just going to check in here i can see that gabby has said thanks for the tip i will definitely try it awesome awesome so the other thing I want to tell you about are uh, the linings of your coat. I typically will line with either a fleece or a mesh. So fleeces are a great option um, for lining. But you and so if you're trying to make a coat that's really warm and keeps your dog nice and uh, warm in the winter, this is fleeces are a great option because it lines it and it's soft and it really does add that extra layer of warmth for them. But the cool thing about fleece is it's also waterproof or water resistant. It will at one point soak through. It's not like um, the rubber, but it is water resistant and it is an excellent option. You can make a whole coat just out of fleece or you can have it as a lining. So there's always lots of different options for colors. Fleece usually comes in several different op options. So it's a great um, choice, as I said, for the lining, but also for uh, just you can make a coat straight out of that. So Gabby's asked a couple of questions here. In general, is it better to have a thicker waterproof fabric or does it not matter if it is thin? And she also says thin fabric for the Alpine coat, for example. So um, it, to be honest, a couple of things. I find it a little more challenging working with this kind of fabric. This is the one that I said was like Gore-Tex or like a canvas. Um, it it just it just doesn't a it doesn't slide because it's got that rubber backing, so it doesn't slide through all that, all that easy. And it's just thicker, so it just tends to be a little bit harder to work through with your with your needle. It's it's going to be harder to punch through it. So it's a bit it's just a bit more challenging to work with. It's still it's still a great option as a coat. And this stuff tends to be more water resistant than um, something like like one of these ones here. So it does, you know, the thicker it is, the more water resistant it's going to be. Um, but it really it depends on how you want the um, just the lay of the coat, like the slicker, the slicker coat really because it wraps underneath the belly. Um, it, 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 I think personally, I think it really is up to you personally what your taste is. But I think because the, the, the slipper is a uh, slicker, is wrapping underneath the belly, it wraps up around the sides of the dog. It's probably better having it in something that's a little more supple like this. 
than something that's really, really thick like that. So I hope that um, answers your question. And then it, uh, it is up to you whether or not you want to have it thick or thin based on the weather and then the environment that you're going to be taking your dog into. Uh, the thicker it is in general, you're going to have a more water resistant coat. So that's kind of why I think about those, you know, along those lines. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. You can let me know if there's any more to it that uh, you wanted to talk about. Just lastly, I want to touch on another option for your coat. So you don't necessarily need, I love to line coats because I always use reflective piping along the edges of my coats. Um, all of these coats, if you can see here, there's, it's kind of showing up there. It has reflective piping on it. This coat here has reflective piping on it. I put reflecting piping on all of the coats just so that the dogs can be seen at nighttime. How I'm, because I really think that's so important. So any coats that I can do it to, I will. So um, if you're lining a coat, it's um, it's really great to use something like a fold over elastic or a piping or reflective piping, as I said, to just do the edges. So I tend to always line my coats because it just makes it easier for me. Um, but if you don't want a super heavy coat that's got that fleece lining, you can also use meshes. So I have a bunch of different meshes. They often come in different. Um, this one has a really, really big hole on it. And then all the way down to this one that has quite a fine hole on it. Um, so there are, you can get the type, different types of meshes, but I do like meshes because they are really breathable. Um, so when you're going back to that question, Gabby, about having the importance of having a breathable coat, it just, it just adds that extra level of um, breathability. It just, uh, it's not necessarily going to be breathable because it's on, it's underneath a fabric that isn't necessarily going to be breathable because of the backing, the, the PUL, but it is, um, it's just not adding another level, another layer of unbreathable to it. So it's, it just makes it cooler for the dog. Um, one other thing, um, that I just wanted to show is this is actually for you too, Gabby, <laughs> but we look, we've looked at this before, but this is what I, another option I want you to think about is using recycled fabrics. So as I talked about earlier, I get these great fabrics from our social fabric, um, because they're recycling it. They're taking it from donations from industry, but maybe just go down to your local, um, secondhand store and just look for some cool fabrics. So this is an example of a really, like this is a great big, 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 big plaid skirt. And I could make several dog coats out of this. It's already got pleats in it somewhere. There they are. It's already got pleats in it. So I can see doing a nice um, skirt or a dress or something like that, or just, um, I have for some customers, I have made like a, a regular, slicker style coat or the cozy style coat and I put a little skirt on the back of it for them because they just like to dress up their little girl a little bit more so that's a really great option go down to your local secondhand store and look for pure wools wool is a great natural water repellent um, fabric so that's a really great option um, and then polyesters as well they have a natural kind of ability to um, resist the water but just to say, you don't always necessarily need a waterproof coat. If you have a dog that has really short hair, um, they're often just really cold outside and they just need that extra layer of warmth. So making a coat out of wool for them, out of polyester for them, something that's more of um, a fabric or a style that you really wanna work with, um, having that as an option instead of this waterproof material is still a great option for dogs that do get cold out in the uh, in the cold weather so it's a it's a really great option is to just go down to that local secondhand store and see what you can find um <laughs> gabby says that plaid she loves that plaid i know gabby's planning on making something with some plaid and she's looking for um, that right now so uh, if she was closer, I'd be sending her some of this fabric, but Gabby, I know, is over in Switzerland, so uh, not so easy to send it to her these days, particularly with uh, with all the shipping problems. So um, that's all I have to share with today. Um, I do have a PDF, which I will be sharing with all of these different types of uh, fabrics that I've been talking about here. So it gives you a little bit more, um, you can take away, you can take that with you to the store. If you don't remember some of these terms, you can go to the store and you can just walk up to the person and the 
people working there and just say, hey, I need some of this PUL. Can you show me where that is? I need some fleece. I need something that's got, um, you know, some faux suede, whatever option is you might want to play with. But one of the main points that I want to make here is that if you change the fabric, you change the coat. And so the cozy coat, which is my favorite style of coat. What did I do with that? Here we go. This is the cozy coat. This is my favorite, favorite kind of coat because it's super adaptable. There we go. It's got the Velcro around the neck, the Velcro around the waist. And you can make this coat into literally any style. You could add um, a skirt to the end of it to uh, change it up. You can add a bow to it. You can add, oh, we're going really, really out of focus there. You can add a belt to it. You could add a hood to it. As you can see on this one, I've added faux fur around the collar. There's all sorts of different options that you can do. But the fun thing about this coat is that it's so simple. It, may, it comes together so quickly. So it's one of my favorite coats for um, playing around with. And if you've been watching some of the um, posts and the Facebook lives that I've talked about recently, this is the style of coat. This is the cozy style coat that I've been showing as an example on how easy it is to um, customize that pattern. So uh, any other questions with you, Gabby, because you're online right now? Do you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? Anyone else that has any questions that um, watch this video later, please just put your comments in below and I would be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, picking out a fabric can really be a little bit daunting if you've never done this before. Um, but really, as far as I love to say, is just that the fabric changes the coat and this, this cozy coat is a great easy coat to make up so you can do it really quickly. And you can just make lots of different coats and different fabrics. So use your imagination. It doesn't look like Gabby has any more questions. So I will sign off. Thank you so much for joining me here. And I hope that you've learned something. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please do um, reach out to me, add a comment below. And I will add the link to how you can get your download with all of the different um, fabrics that I talked about. Um, so take a look down below in the comments down below after this goes um, goes up live, or it is live, but once it goes back up for the re replay version, you'll see the comments down below, and I will put the link to how you can get your download if you'd like that. So, and Gabby says, love that cozy coat. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. I love it too. It is one of my favorites. So uh, thank you again. Thank you, Gabby, for joining me live today. And thank you to anyone else that watches this later. I hope you get something out of it and feel free to question if you have any. Okay. Bye-bye.